Hello, everyone. So, in political discussion, there seems to be a common axiom to nearly every ideology or end of the ideological spectrum, and this is that democracy is freedom, and the two terms are used either interchangeably or democracy is used to explain freedom. Literally, if you Google freedom, democracy is listed as a synonym. This is something which has bothered me for a while, and I've been planning on making a video on the subject for some time now. And yes, I know it's another video essay. I promise at least the next video will not be a video essay. So, the best place to begin on this subject is simply to start by defining our terms. Well, freedom has basically become a meaningless buzzword at this point in mainstream debate used by everyone to describe their own ideological goals, regardless of how limiting to the individual they are. People who advocate for communism describe oppressing free association and stealing from people as freedom. People who advocate for more state influence over borders describe that as freedom. So, what is freedom, and what makes someone free? Well, freedom, by description, can be best defined as having individual autonomy, and, as a result, individuals must have the right to self-ownership. Not only does this need to be a standard in order to have freedom, but this also needs to be a standard to have justice, since if someone doesn't have ownership over their own actions, it would be impossible to argue that they have determinism, or that they would have rights to begin with, and therefore, not only could they not be held accountable for their own actions if they wronged someone else, but also anything could happen to them and no one else would be able to be held accountable for that as well. So this can't be the case and you also can't own other people because in order to do that, you would need to establish the standard that other people don't have self-ownership, which is self-evidently a contradiction and therefore cannot exist in a society that has justice. So according to this, freedom and justice are inseparable. And also, by acknowledging this, you must inherently reject the concept of a state or a centralized political authority because the state operates as a parasitic ruling class which forces us to associate with it, steals from us, monopolizes the market so we're forced to associate under its terms and gives itself bailout, kills and kidnaps us and justifies its actions with artificial and made-up excuses, stops us from traveling freely, just to name a few things. And the legislators do all of this by setting a different standard for themselves than anyone else. And what's a democracy? Well, it literally translates to rule of the people, but to be more specific and to try and be as fair as possible without using the typical dishonest euphemisms used to define it by supporters of it, democracy is a form of rule over a society under which its citizens cast individual votes to decide how society is organized. Now, this of course is democracy in its direct form, which is not what most modern governments have now. What most modern governments have now is a republican democracy, which is basically the same thing except the population votes for legislators who supposedly represent their wishes and interests. Well, with this all being established, how on earth could anyone argue that democracy is even remotely compatible with individual freedom or even justice? Just because a system of rule doesn't imply determinism or isn't ruled by one or a few people doesn't mean that the system isn't a tyranny. First of all, under a democracy, much like any other system of rule, the individual has no rights. Because if people can vote on anything and the majority say is how society's rules are determined no matter what, this means that the individual's rights are always also at stake and can be violated at a moment's notice. However, if there are things which the population can't vote on, then it isn't a democracy. But in either case, something becomes apparent to you once you think about the implications of what's actually being proposed. What 
actually binds you to the decisions made by the vote of the collective and what will they do if you refuse despite the majority voting in opposition to our rights well there is nowhere in which you and i agree to be part of that democratic system no proof that anyone ever agreed for that matter there's no consensual agreement and therefore no one can argue that the system is consensual but what about people who vote well people are voting to take their rights away and are voting against their own interest the interest of the individual either way they're forced to deal with the outcome so some people vote in defense of their own rights but this still isn't consensual because they're voting to try and stop their rights from being violated this doesn't mean that they consent this in principle is no different than kidnapping two people putting them in a cage and having them fight with each other until one of them dies and before someone says it no there is no such thing as implicit or tacit consent consent can only be active because it requires something tangible to prove it otherwise it's an unfalsifiable claim that can be changed revoked or rewritten at any time and there's no way to challenge any claim that you did or didn't consent and what happens if you refuse to accept the majority vote well of course you'll be held that gunpoint and forced into accepting it with the threat of coercion because without force to back it up the democratic vote is meaningless keep in mind that of course that you're born into this system and you have no choice on the matter no proof you ever consented the system can do whatever it wants to you since there's no conditions to your agreement and if you don't go along with what it says you'll be fined imprisoned or murdered yeah freedom I mean, I don't think many people actually think that hard about democracy or what they're advocating for. Rule of the people doesn't mean that you're free. All it means is that you become oppressed by your own neighbors and vice versa. So society becomes nothing more at best than a contest to enslave your fellow man before they enslave you. So now you may be asking, what's the alternative then? Well, it's really simple, actually. No centralized political authority dictating how society functions. People operate voluntarily on mutually agreed upon terms. People secure their own rights. And if people disagree with how the system operates and want an alternative, they spread their opinions. Then they can get together with like-minded individuals and establish a private commune where they can compete with the rest of society. No coercion required. No state. Total freedom and justice. This is known as individualist anarchy, voluntarist anarchy, or anarcho-capitalism. And a video will be located in the description explaining how this system will be achieved and how to get rid of the one that we have. Thank you all for watching. If you liked it, please comment, rate, and subscribe. If you're feeling really generous, then please consider donating to my Patreon. Thank you all, and I will see you next time.